Hello everyone. I hope you are experiencing the, the grace and love of God. Whichever part of the world you you're listening from. Um and I hope you're being fruitful. Because that's our purpose. Now I I thank God for 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 life cuz I'm okay. Everything is really going okay. Just experiencing been experiencing in the past few days some hiccups, you know, with my project, setbacks, you know, things that are not normal. Things that have never happened before, you know. But I thank God that that's over over with. So every time I do I take long to um post a video or anything, I am not dead. <laughs> I'm alive. But today I have something interesting for you. You know, something that has been brewing for the past many days and it's finally ready today. You see, the thing is, the current state of the world makes me wonder, you know, and oftentimes I really wonder. Is the deception in the world going to get any bigger, you know, than what's happening already? Because you look at all these things happening in the world, things like racism, spirituality, you know, the politics. I mean, so many doctrines, you know, people are receiving and the thing is the world is vulnerable many people are vulnerable that they just want a sense of hope so anything that kind of makes sense to them they will so much knowledge coming in you know that people are sharing and some of this knowledge is, is not coming from a healthy place I'll tell you that that well some of them know that it's it's they know what they're doing, they're deceiving people for personal gain or some kind of agenda and some genuinely do not know. They simply come and share what they have discovered. But even its source is not right. And some are sharing, you know, what's really right. But all I can say is that in, in everything that we do, God should be in the center of it. So, the whole deception going on in the world right now, if you really think of it, so many people are falling away, you know, from from the faith, from believing in God. So many bad things, so many evil things, so many attacks and senseless things have been said about God and, you know, <coughs> His Son. And so many people are following. Many false teachers. Many deceptions, many many deceivers are, are leading people away. Some of these people, the sad thing is, these are people that once knew God. The Bible says that no man knows the time. No man knows the time. But so many people seem to know the time. They seem to know the time. But the thing is, I always do encourage people to be open-minded and to be humble. Because you see, when you're open-minded and you're humble, you'll be able to see what an average person won't be able to see. If everything is playing, if, if the noise is playing around you, Cover your ears in patience and listen. You will be amazed the other voices, the other voice you will hear. In a crowd of people, there's always noise. But if you concentrate, if you relax and concentrate patiently, you'll start hearing what each and everyone is saying. But if you 
confused and trying to listen here and there, here and there, you'll never get anything. Today in church, the pastor shared about something totally different, you know, something about, um, something about the wife of Lot, you know, remembering Lot's wife, you know, the whole situation and God was taking these people out of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he did a very, he gave us a very wonderful message. That's something I'll share in the description after they upload the video to the channel. And the, the most amazing thing is that as he taught the same the portion of scripture he read ministered unto me new wisdom you know something that under, you know led me to understand something else I always tell you guys that You can seek God, you know, over anything. To understand something, to... But when you let him in, when you let him walk, he, he will even tell you things because God is a friend. He regards us as... He sees us as friends. Not servants, you know. That is very interesting and that's a very good position to be in. So what happens is... In my case, God, God always, you know, brings up something... Even when it's not what I'm thinking about, he just he surprises you, you know, he speaks. And you understand something. So I'm gonna read from Luke chapter 17 from verse 20. Uh, up until I think 30. It says the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 17 from verse 20 to 30. The kingdom of God. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God comes not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto the disciples, The days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you shall not see it. I want you to listen carefully to this. And they, they shall say to you, See here or see there, go not after them nor follow them for as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven shines unto the other part under heaven so shall also the son of man be in his day but first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, it was as it was in the days of, of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, in it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. In Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Well, that is uh, verse 30. I think let me read until 36. In that day, he which shall be upon 
the house top and his staff in the house let him not come down to take it away and he that is in the field let him likewise not return back remember lord's wife whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it i tell you in that night there shall be two men in one bed the one shall be taken and the other shall be left two women shall be grinding at the mill shall be grinding together the one shall be taken and the other left two men shall be in the field the one shall be taken and the other left and they answered and said unto him where lord and he said unto them wheresoever the body is there will the eagles be gathered together brothers and sisters this is what people call the rapture and this is death this is your death he said that the kingdom of god is within you so meaning this whole kingdom this whole journey you walk around with it it's within you it is a personal thing do you know how deep this is and he says that in verse 20 and when he was demanded of the pharisees when the kingdom of god should come he answered them and said the kingdom of god comes not with observation this is what people are doing today people are observing the kingdom of god people are observing the kingdom the coming of the kingdom of god they anticipate some kind of situation some kind of event some kind of oh my god this is sad and it's it's really deep people anticipate some kind of event to happen for this kingdom of god to come And verse 22 he says, uh, verse 21 says, Neither shall they say, Law here or law there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Isn't that amazing? At the kingdom of God, you don't have to go to some kind of location, some kind of place, some kind of gathering to experience the kingdom of God. It is within you. You, the believer. And you don't go to a place and you observe it that oh the kingdom of god is over there it is within you meaning everything that happens happens within you it is a personal thing it is a personal thing sorry about that i'm looking so much away it is a personal thing and <laughs> verse 22 says and he said unto the disciples the days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the son of man and you shall not see it people are anticipating some day when they want to see that sky open you know like see christ and he is saying you will not see it this, this is the bible he's telling these disciples you know, one might say that, hey, he was telling these disciples because they would be dead by then. But remember, he talked about this generation. This generation meaning us, we are still in that generation. Generation in this case meaning a lifetime. This lifetime, right? And they shall say to you, see here or see there. Go not after them nor follow them for as the lightning that light that lightens out of the one part under heaven shines shines unto the other part under heaven so shall also the son of man be in his day you know what's funny 
what he says is that in that day you know everyone will see god like the same way someone living in china someone living in america someone living in, in um canada north america someone living in um alaska someone living in the south pole in the atlantic someone here in africa north africa east africa west africa south africa europe australia each and everyone is going to see him clearly what this shows is that it's not going to be a physical thing it's going to be a spiritual thing because for one in china to see the same exact picture as someone who's because you see they say the world is round right usually it's dark it's night on one part of the of the planet and bright on the other part of the planet so meaning we can't see things the same way but he says in that day everyone is going to see it the same and as clear and let me tell you what that is that is your death because at death you will see everything with clarity you stand before the the judgment seat of god and he will judge you and it says it's full of lightning and roars roarings of thunder right and lightning like you just stand you just stand before him and it's you know it's just scary it's a scary sight because there's so much power that even the atmosphere can't handle it right so it has for the atmosphere to to comprehend god's god's presence there has to be thunderings and reactions lightning right but the world has eaten up this deception that they some day probably a thursday or a tuesday some year that this is going to happen guys i want to share with you this i didn't receive this for no reason do not be deceived do not wait for some rapture put your life in order repent and be ready because let me tell you something this means your life this means your death listen to this he says but first that's verse 25 but first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation and as it was in the days of noah so shall it be also in the days of the son of man they did eat they drank they married wives they were given into marriage in marriage until that day that noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all there is going to be something that is going to destroy the whole world just like the flood destroyed noah something is going to destroy the whole world the whole world is going to be destroyed but before it gets destroyed people are going to still be giving be getting married giving themselves uh be, they're going to be given into marriage they're going to be drinking they're going to be happy they're going to be chilling drinking and partying doing their normal life you know their normal stuff until that day happens and many are going to be destroyed many are going to be destroyed and the thing is nor like today they explained him in church like like today it's it's like the church is nor right you are nor you mr or mrs christian or mr or miss christian out there you are the nor when you enter that ship god is going to destroy the world and what is entering the ship the kingdom of god you enter the kingdom of god which is within you you live according to that kingdom because that kingdom gives you that king gives you instruction is like do not do this it's it's not good he gives you an instructor the holy spirit and he guides you he watches over you 
He tells you of things to come, of the things that you need to. He guides you really about everything. But he said that kingdom does not come with observation. In fact, for the most part, many Christians are never recognized. In a sense that we live in the world whereby you see a doctor, you see, you see an engineer, you see an artist, you see a musician, you see all these people and you see them from afar. But for a Christian, you won't. You won't settle down and start observing, you start seeing, you start, you start trying to figure him out. You will not because he is led by God and that is within him. Today you might see him there, tomorrow you might see them there, tomorrow you might see them there. It is until you also receive that kingdom within you that you will understand, that you will recognize someone that's also living in the kingdom. And you see the funny thing, as, or the most interesting thing as, a, as a, a person in the kingdom of God, you will recognize those that are not in the kingdom of God. You will. Because he will be speaking to you. He will be showing you what foreigners people from different kingdoms do you see it in their actions you see it in their life in their life in their life in their practice their lifestyle you will see it and you're like no 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 but you see a, a christian is someone who who's regarded like uncultured because you go and do a lot of things that the world doesn't agree with right that are against this world <laughs> you know the normal being a christian is being abnormal right you, you're the strange the strange creature around but i'm telling you i get i get so i, I get in a place i get to a place sometimes where i think i'm like hey If that deception is so grand right now, if it's so good, it's so big, it's well packaged, that people are eating it up. And the people that you look up to and you're like, wow, this guy, this, 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 this guy is a real deal. Next thing you know, they are gone. I ask myself, is it going to get any more deceptive? Is it going to go any deeper? If it goes deeper, what's going to happen, you know? Because God right now, he's marking his people. He is marking his people. And anyone who is waiting for that rapture, that day, that particular day, I think might be waiting in vain. Hear this. I tell you that night, there shall be two men in one bed, the one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. If there's two people sleeping on one bed, and one is taken and one is left, what is that? That is death. That is death. People think there's going to be some kind of vanishing, some kind of disappearance that People will see that, wow, the world has disappeared. You know, some people have had a theory whereby they believe that these guys are going to introduce aliens and people will vanish and they will make some kind of claim that, well, that's what the satanic kingdom plans. They think that they want to introduce, that, that's why they want to introduce aliens, by the way, because they're waiting for the rapture that day where people will vanish and they say they were alien alien abductions they are so deceived it's not gonna happen that way I wanna tell you it is already happening it is already happening because your death is the rapture but that is going to happen that kind of death is gonna happen until a certain period after God has taken away all these people then he destroys the world you know that 
moment where everyone enters the everybody enters the ship and then they close the door boom when god finally closes the door of the ship of the boat the world is going to get destroyed it's going to be a wrap up i'm telling you so i want to encourage you let me read another one i read verse 34 now 35 two women shall be grinding together the one shall be taken the other left when people read this they think it's gonna be like whew, whew. she could die of a heart attack there could be an explosion and she dies one dies the other stays it could be a, a mass murder or anything we do not know two men that's 36 two men shall be in the field the one shall be taken the other left who knows how they're gonna die maybe they'll be persecuted maybe they'll be killed nobody knows this my friends i want to make you realize this do not place a date or a time frame on god that is very disrespectful he will visit you when you do not expect it but what, what the only piece of advice i can give to the world is you get ready if god says i'm coming for you today at seven and he surely comes for you let him not find you sleeping with someone's wife let him not find you sleeping with someone's husband let him not find you orchestrating a robbery let him not find you getting high on some drug because you can overdose and that's your moment you can lose your mind a demon can attack you when you're high and you lose your life that way don't let him find you in the bar getting crazy in a bar fight someone can hit you with a bottle on that head someone can slice your neck with a glass or knife with a shattered glass you know bottle broken bottle or anything and you meet your maker then are you gonna be ready how are you gonna explain to him that lord oh lord 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 i was ready and god says that that faithful and good servant is he that was ready that faithfully waited for his for his master but is that evil and sinful servant that saw that his master was taking too long you see the the, the thing about this rapture teaching that is going on or deception that's going on is they are anticipating a time a time frame and if it doesn't happen which is not going to happen they always anticipate a time frame and it's going to happen like this i remember growing up some aunt of mine one of my aunt my aunties she told me when i just got in you know into these things i was young i was i think i think i was 15 and you know talking the bible with her and i'd come across these things triple six what what i was so i was so interested you know and intuitive so curious to know these things read about the rapture i was like wow the rapture is gonna happen in fact i remember i just watched a movie about the rapture where people vanished and all that my aunt told me people have been talking about the rapture since the 1940s that this is the time this is the time the, the world is still living the world is still continuing nothing ever happened but let me tell you the sad truth is the rapture is already happening and no one knows nobody knows i hope there's another christian out there that recognizes this i hope there's another person out there seeing this because i can tell you this and i seem crazy i seem cuckoo your rapture is your life your, your death the day you die you have been raptured away and the thing is
When people believe this kind of thing and it doesn't happen, they'll be discouraged. They'll be like, no. Let me tell you, I had a rapture dream and I understood what the rapture dream meant. It wasn't me seeing people vanishing. They were vanishing. Like, they were vanishing. Trust me, they were vanishing. But they vanished for a while. It didn't happen like a once-off event. Like, they, they vanished from 12 to 6 in the evening. From, from 12 noon to 6 in the evening. And in different parts, like, random. It happened randomly and I saw what happened after they left the chaos that was on the planet you know it's because these are the people that still that were holding the, the, the were the, the joints were the representative of, the representatives of peace when all of them left there was chaos all over the planet I'm telling you it was it was hell on earth And many people have had rapture dreams, but they've never taken the time. You know, sometimes people wake up from a dream and say, ah, I saw the rapture. No, done, it's gonna happen. Take your time to ask God, what did you mean when you showed me this dream? You'll be amazed the things God will show you. He'll tell you this means this, that means that, that means that, that means that. Don't be the kind of person that receives a, a, a dream from God and it's just, plain as you see it we've seen in the bible that dreams mean something i want to tell you something guys do not wait for that day because that day is not going to come and you're going to lose your hope in god in christ and you're going to blame him why aren't you coming back look at how evil the world is and no one knows that day. You know, Christ says that you, you see the times, but you cannot tell. You see, the times we're living in, they're evident of the, they, they are evident, evidence that the world is coming to an end, not the rapture coming. Because remember when Christ said that, hey, when you see all these things happen in Matthew chapter 24, when you see all these things happening, then just know that the end is near. They're just birth pains, right? It's, it's like a woman going into labor, you know, the contractions. When you see all these things happen, just know that the end is close, but it's not yet. But he didn't say that, just know that rapture is, is close. He said the end. I've shared before that I do believe in the rapture, but not the rapture the world knows, or the, the rapture you have been taught. And I want to tell you guys, not so many believers believe this. People believe in God and I don't put anyone in error, but I want you to see this, that you should not be deceived. You could be driving to another neighborhood or going grocery shopping or going to a different district or state or country or whatever you call it from your side of the world and you get involved in a brutal accident and you do not make it are you ready to meet god Is everything in, in your life really in order, you know? And here's the thing. We always talk about God is coming back. God is coming back. Put yourselves in order. Put your lives in order. How do you put your life in order? Let me talk about that for a second. Make things right before God. Go to God and tell him, Lord, I am a sinner. I am a thief. I am a murderer. In fact, or perhaps I love murdering so much that I'm addicted to it. Or I'm, uh, I'm full of lust, I'm so lustful. I love to lust. Tell him exactly how you feel.
and you accept him to come and make it right with you and tell him to come and teach you how to, to be right before him. See, because most times people think coming forthright with God is, hey God, I'm a sinner, I'm a thief. You confess. Confessing your sin, speaking it out. Speak it out completely with a pure heart. Tell him even what you, you plan to do with your sin. That is what a true confession is. Whereby someone goes to confess. You've seen this... Uh, movies where people go to the priest and confess and they tell the priest actually that's true confession only that they're doing it the wrong way to the wrong people that hey forgive me father for i have sinned i have slept with my brother's wife he goes in detail he's like i have done this you know they do it in hollywood and people think they laugh at these things but that's how you really confess I'm telling you, that's how the people confess. They're like, this is too much. You know, you see the priest saying this is too much because it gets too much for the priest. It's not too much for God. I slept with my brother's wife. The first time, was when my brother had traveled, I met up with her. We went to a motel. We went to a hotel or we went to some, some place. The next thing you know, next time, the first time it was a coincidence, right? The second time, she called me. To help out with something, I did it again. The third time, now it's an affair. I do plan to kill my brother and take his wife. Or I do something like that, you know? And someone just tells him, you are forgiven, my child. But he has done the right confession to the wrong God. That is how you should confess. You tell God your sin. You accept. You accept that you are a sinner. You tell him your sin. And you tell him your intention to that sin. And after that, you invite him to come and teach you. You surrender and invite him to come and teach you. That is the solution to coming to God. And after that, Immediately ignore the, that sin. Ignore. Run away from it. Go read your Bible. Start seeking God through reading the Bible. I would advise you to start with the, with the New Testament, Matthew and all that. And read all through. But, but the Old Testament is also good. You could read them, but read the New Testament every day. Make sure you read it more often. I'm telling you, so many people have been deceived, so many people are deceived. I, I don't know what more to tell people. I don't know what more I can share about this topic. But guys, I'm telling you, do not be deceived. The world has been deceived already. It is so sad, you know. I was reading in the book of Exodus. I think chapter 15 chapter 15 i guess and i saw how these guys crossed the re um the red sea right god did that miracle the sea parted do you know what it means for a sea to part like when you pass through and it covers again that is something You don't see every day and you see, you walk at the oh god you walk at the bottom at the ground of the sea right and you cross and then it covers and then when they reach the wilderness god gave them miraculous food you know like manna because they couldn't farm they couldn't the dry the land was dry and that manna these guys ate it for 40 years God gave them that food for 40 years. Imagine growing up a child one year. All your 40 years, you've grown up eating miraculous food. And these guys had the audacity to still turn away from God and worship other gods. 
And you ask, and you, and you wonder, and you ask yourself, what went wrong? What went wrong? That God got these people out of Egypt, took them through the wilderness, and they still betrayed him, even with all the power, the miracles and signs he did. So you, my friend, who is seeking a sign, you should reconsider. Anyone can make sign. Anyone can can give you signs. Anyone can perform miracles these days. The devil does that. Witchcraft does that. You see people, witch doctors, levitating in the air. You see people from all kinds of religions do all these miraculous things. Magicians. Magicians walking on water, turning water into wine. They do all these things. Of course, with the aid of the devil, they do this. But do not be tricked by just a sign or a wonder. You have something more. There was, the, there was that woman that Paul met that used to prophesy, but she used to use her divination spirit, you know, from the, the dark, the dark side. You know? And the thing is, they were using it for gain even. Satan is starting something new. There's a new thing Satan is doing. Because he knows that people who serve God, they will serve God for free. You know, without asking for money, without asking for anything. He knows that we are ready to do that. So he is also planting people that are mimicking this. Where someone can come and say, I don't want your money. I don't want your money. All I want is for you to know the word of God. Then they come and they deceive you. And then you feel so pitiful. You're like, oh my God. I mean, he's really, a, he's truly a man of God because he's not asking for money. He's not asking for money. Let me tell you, Satan has those people too. But you see, the thing is, they, they manipulate you. That's a thing they never see. So Satan will always, his, his, his ways will always come out. Will always come out. You know? There's that new breed of deceivers I'm telling you they are taking people to hell they are taking people to hell and this is so sad that people don't see this please read your Bibles please read your Bibles please seek God please put your, your houses in order because anytime you're gonna die anytime you're gonna die anytime If I want, I can sit here and start crying and tear and just cry for for every soul out there, but I can't do that, it's useless. You know? It is a useless thing to do that. See, the only thing one can pray for is that his only hope that, that hey I'm doing this thing I'm serving God I don't know where it's going to end but I pray that people really hear and listen and I want to tell you something guys some of us do this genuinely you know we do this genuinely because we want you to experience the goodness of God. We want you to experience the God that has never been preached, the side of God that has never been preached. I mean, people tell that God is a God, is a wrath-filled God. Yes, he's wrath-filled. But why does he get wrath-filled? They don't want to tell you that part. They don't want to tell you the part of God that is loving and caring. They don't want to tell you the side of God that, that sacrificed his son for you. You know? They don't want to tell you the side of God that is willing to forgive you, no matter how filthy you feel or unworthy. They don't want to tell you about that kind of God. Satan doesn't want you to know that kind of God. He doesn't want you to know. And let me tell you something. You will see so many people saying that they are Christians. So many people saying that they are Christian. But I'm telling you, 
to them they are, but to God they are not. And when God looks down here, he sees a small portion of people. You might even find that on the planet right now, there's like 1,000 people, or 100,000, or 200,000 people that only God recognizes and says, these are my children from all the eight or seven billion that's on the earth. I'm telling you this. I don't want to scare you, but I want to tell you that you wake up and you're like, hey, I'm struggling with this. I am tired of struggling with this kind of habit. I'm, I'm tired of struggling with this kind of thinking. I want to put my, 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 my life in order. And you can't do it because you've tried it so many times and you've failed. It is time you surrender. It is time you, you call God. You invite him to take charge. That's his job. That's the job of God, is to love you. His job is to love you. That's his job. Can you imagine such a job? <laughs> his job, if you ask God, what's your job? What do you do? And he tells you, I love. That is my job, I love. That's what God is there doing. I mean, who wouldn't want to be loved? Like, His love is out there waiting for you. But we're so engrossed in things like fashion, music, what's trending, who has what? Who bought this? Who bought that? Don't care for these things. They're so wildly and vain. You know? The thing is, let people wake up. Let people truly follow God. We, we, we start, you know, someone starts sitting down and you start looking at someone's clothing. You're like, why don't you listen to the word of God they're preaching, they're teaching, they're sharing? And all you're looking is looking at is what they're dressed like. Seek first the you know, the kingdom of God. And he will let you know what kind of dress code you should take. You, you know what direction you should take with your dress code. What should you take when you do this? You understand? But for the most part, people immediately just run to a place. Oh, he's a shabby guy. He's asking people for money. He's doing this. He's doing that. You know? It is so sad. It is incredibly sad. What is happening in the world today. But God bless you. And I pray that this encourages you. This wakes you up. This pinches you. I want this to be a pinch the back of your head you know that hey what this guy is saying is something I ought to listen to something I ought to to follow right I've talked about this before but I presented you something it's it's up to you to um come in the comments and debate it I'm not, I'm not gonna debate I respect everyone's thoughts and I do that out of, out of love, trust me, honestly, I do. Because I could, you know, sit down and disagree with people. I'm a person that's led by love. I, I want to be led by love. I surrender myself to love. I always want to look out for good. There's a lot of potential for good out there. That so many people have killed, that have not nurtured. I want to be that kind of person that nurtures it. So, you're welcome to add anything, you know, or deduct. God bless you. Be fruitful.